We can even go further. One of the newest developments is that nanoparticulate matter can be stabilized for distribution. If you're not aware of what nanoparticulate matter is, it's that matter which exists on a scale of 1 times 10 to the minus 9th. Very, very small. Smaller than a cell. And we can manufacture materials that have discrete properties that can be controlled by virtue of bioengineering and their physical chemistry. To auto-aggregate, to be able to aggregate in particular areas based upon their biological and or chemical sensitivity. But now we go one step further. Most recently, just a few weeks ago, it was announced that you could then aerosolize nanomaterials. And go one step further, I can create small robotic units, controllable robotic units at the nanoscale, and that these two can be aerosolized to create a nanoswarm of biopenetrable materials that you cannot see, that can penetrate all but the most robust biochemical filters that are able to integrate themselves through a variety of membranes, mucous membranes in wherever, mouth, nose, ears, eyes, can be then uptaken into the vascular system to create clumping, can affect the vascular system of the brain or can directly diffuse into the brain space, and these can be weaponized. And they can be done in such a level that their presence is almost impossible to detect, and as such, the attribution becomes exceedingly difficult to demonstrate. How much of this material would I need? Take a look. This is the front of my pen. This amount of nanomaterial, if be able to maintain and sustain with regard to its deliverability and aerosolization, could in fact affect all of you, or based upon where I come from, New York City, all yous. Look at this. Look at this. I'm carrying that material. Did you see it? Would I have to lug a giant weapon into the room? No, I wouldn't. And what if, in fact, I utilize some form of an unmanned aerial device or unmanned ground device as a delivery vehicle, something like a drone or a bug? Could I do something with that? But let's keep going. Could I also utilize a whole host of devices to be able to affect individuals close in, for example, during interrogations, during social engagements, during human terrain team engagements, or more remotely, in a room, in a theater, in an airplane, in a bus, in a store, in a mall? The answer is increasingly yes. So this then represents for us both a challenge and an opportunity. The challenge is that increasingly what we find is that neuroscience and technology is relatively easy to obtain. Many of the things that I've just spoken to you about are viable and obtainable directly to the consumer or directly to the scientist. We also know that many of the products that are available direct to consumer can be easily modified to create things that have a much higher weaponization potential. But more than that, we also recognize that there are dedicated efforts on the part of nation states and even groups of non-state actors and increasingly virtual nations that are using virtual currencies to fund research efforts in these areas. I'd like to think that I'm a smart guy talking to a bunch of very intelligent individuals, but let's face it, we're not the only smart people in the world. And if we're thinking this way, there are plenty of other people who are thinking this way too. Some of them are our allies, some of them may be our competitors, and some of them are combatants and hostiles. And this is in fact the reality.